Good morning, or perhaps good afternoon to everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today for today's webinar. We are super excited that you've chosen to spend a little bit of your busy day today with us, and we're very honored actually to have some special guests here on the line and who are going to be sharing a little bit about their experience with Meraki, and that's a few people from the group at uh, the team at DeVry Education Group. And I'm going to go ahead and introduce uh, those folks in a moment. This is what we have lined up in terms of our agenda for the next hour or so. Uh, we'll start off with a brief look at Meraki, give you a little bit of background into the solution and the organization, and then we're going to spend most of our time actually going over a case study with the DeVry Education Group, and we'll have a discussion and the, group, the team will share a little bit about their deployment and their experience to date. We'll also supplement that with a live demo by using the Meraki solution right here in the webinar so you can see uh, in real time what they, uh, what they use and how they've configured their network and what some of the value that they get from it is. We'll then wrap it up at the end with a quick look at the Cisco Meraki product families and we uh, hopefully will have a little bit of time for Q&A but I would uh, suggest that if you have any questions throughout the presentation, whether it's about Meraki, whether it's about the uh, DeVry case study, just go ahead and enter those into the Q&A area of the webinar panel. And with me on the line is also one of my colleagues, Tanya, and she and I will both be looking at the questions as they come in, uh, answering some in the Q&A and also answering some verbally. Uh, and if you have questions for the DeVry group, of course, we'll uh, share those questions here during the webinar and have them uh, answer them, answer those questions too. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in. We'll start off with a little bit of background about Cisco Meraki. Now, Cisco Meraki is a complete cloud-managed networking solution that includes Wi-Fi, switching, security, mobile device management, all of which are tightly integrated in terms of hardware, software, cloud services, and managed completely through the cloud. And we'll see what this looks like specifically in just a bit, but basically it means that you, you have a single pane of glass through which you can manage all of your network infrastructure at all of your locations, do monitoring, configuration, management, troubleshooting, and so on, in a very, very easy to use interface, which we call the Meraki dashboard. We are the leaders in cloud-managed networking, and in fact, we are among Cisco's fastest growing portfolios. We have over 75,000 unique customers around the world across a variety of, of industries. Of course, our focus today is on higher education, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of the customers in that space in just a moment. And there are over a million Meraki network devices that are online, active, and being managed by the cloud. It's really a solution that has proven it can scale. One of the main uh, ideas of producing the, the Meraki solution and, and evolving it is to really bring the benefits of the cloud to higher education networks. Uh, education in general is one of our most important uh, industries, and uh, I'm sure everyone has had some type of experience with uh, cloud-based solutions. Uh, different solutions offer different benefits, and of course it's, it's a pretty broad term, uh, but in this case what we're trying to do is bring a solution that is actually leveraging those benefits of the cloud, those things that we've all heard about and read about, uh, really the promise of the cloud, and bringing it to the networking environment. So we've created a solution that's intuitive, that's secure, that's scalable, and that's reliable. I think you'll see firsthand what we mean by its intuitiveness when we go through the demo. It is a very easy to use browser-based dashboard through which you uh, monitor and manage all of your infrastructure. We'll talk a little bit about the architecture here just to let you know about where the cloud is involved and where it isn't. Specifically, we've designed the architecture for security, and that means that no user traffic passes through the cloud. It's only management and configuration data. We also apply automatic firmware and security updates because our team is on top of that and managing that uh, system 24-7. And if some of you have security concerns or, or uh, are sensitive to that, we are fully PCI compliant, level one certified for 
for example. Uh, that's a certification that tends to apply more in the financial and retail industries, uh, but it does also give uh, reassurance to education customers about the security of the solution in general. We briefly touched on the scalability uh, just a, a moment ago. You can really manage thousands of devices or thousands of locations uh, with no on-site staff and no pre-configuration uh, or on-site uh, configuration necessary. You can, in fact, remotely provision sites in just a few minutes. In fact, if you have satellite campuses or perhaps professors or university staff that uh, want to or need to maintain connectivity to the campus network, you can actually provision those uh, locations very, very quickly. And we've built the system with reliability in mind. Of course, this is another aspect of uh, the cloud that is a, really a benefit, and that's that you can have high availability. In our case, we've deployed multiple data centers really around North America and around the world, and designed it such that there's automatic failover between data centers, and we've designed the architecture such that if the connection to the Meraki cloud happens to be interrupted for some reason, the network will still continue to work, it will still to continue to apply uh, security policies uh, and so on, and your network stays up even if that connection to the cloud is temporarily interrupted. Now we do have uh, thousands of higher education users, and these are just some of the organizations that have chosen to deploy Meraki. You can see a smattering of uh, colleges, universities, community college systems, and so on here. Uh, there are many, many more, and I definitely encourage you to uh, check out some of the stories that we have available online, uh, perhaps after the webinar on Meraki.com. Uh, of course, today we're going to focus on one particular case and really dive in a little bit more deeply. But if there are some names that you see here that maybe are in your home region or that you'd like to learn a little bit more about, uh, you're welcome to reach out to us and we can arrange a conversation with uh, some of the people at those uh, colleges or universities. Okay, so we are super excited and super happy to uh, welcome a few of the folks from the DeVry Education Group, specifically from the IT team. And with us on the line today, we have Jim, Eric, and David. And uh, first of all, I, I want to say um, thank you to all of you, all three of you who have taken some time out of your busy schedule to share a little bit about your experience with Meraki uh, with this group here. Great. Well, thank you very much for the introduction. This is Eric uh, along here with David and Jim, and we're excited today to share a little bit about our experience with the Meraki rollout that we recently completed. Um, we're excited to share because it went very well for us. Um, for those of you, if we advance to the next slide, uh, about DeVry Education Group a little bit. Uh, DeVry Education Group really is most, many folks know us for DeVry University, which is one of our flagship brands, but we actually have eight different institutions that comprise DeVry Education Group, and we offer education and degrees in healthcare, business, technology, accounting, finance, law, and we're very much an international organization. Um, we have uh, many campuses here in North America. We also have campuses in the Caribbean islands, and we also have campuses in Brazil. Um, so DeVry Education Group oftentimes surprises people in that it is uh, larger than just DeVry University. And so we have in our IT team here, we have a networking team of about 11 persons um, that are responsible for network operations for our enterprise and growing, right? So a decade ago, we were at 60,000 students, but now through acquisitions and growth, we're now at about 215,000 students in the United States the Caribbean islands and Brazil. And again, today we're excited to share with you a little bit of our story of how things went as we rolled out the Meraki uh, access points across our North American and Caribbean island locations, and that really began last fall for us. Eric, if, if you wouldn't mind me asking, uh, where are you and your team located? So this team here, we're located in the Chicago suburbs, um, so we're in Chicago, Illinois. Um, that's our IT home office is in Chicago. 
Um, in total, we have a large IT team, right? We have the networking team, which is distributed here in Chicago and in some of our other offices and campuses. Uh, and then we have other IT colleagues at our campus locations uh, across the United States. Great, thank you. Sure. So if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about uh, how you arrived in the, on the Meraki solution and what you were looking to achieve before you deployed the uh, Meraki. Sure, this, this is Jim McMakin now. Um, the, uh, the solution was, uh, we did a, a proof of concept and basically uh, did a number of solutions. Um, the, the solution that we had was old and outdated, uh, was uh, put in you know, by people that uh, didn't necessarily know wireless and, and didn't uh, necessarily think about you know, where they located the access points. You know, if, if they had a, a space in the ceiling, they'd throw it up there or things like that. So it was, it was just not well thought through. Um, you know, we, uh, we, we moved the access points down and, and, you know, deployed them in a different way. Uh, you know, we pretty much, uh, we're, we're getting wireless uh, tickets all the time. So, you know, we, we wanted to make sure that you know, whatever we put in was going to be easy to manage and, and you know, to, to work with. Uh, the, the, the tickets were consuming uh, a great deal of time. Uh, so, you know, we, our tickets have gone from, you know, we were getting about 2,200 tickets uh, per month and uh, before we deployed. Uh, after we deployed uh, Meraki, we're down to about 10 tickets per month, and most of them tickets are really just uh, because of the new deployment, you know, figuring out uh, the overlap, figuring out, you know, uh, what radios, uh, you know, ways to have, have them set up for and how to configure so that we're, uh, you know, able to switch between access points as we move from uh, one point to another, or, you know, in some cases it was because uh, in with our old deployment, we had wireless outside uh, access points, and when we deployed this, we didn't purchase any outside access points, and we and we now have them. So uh, we worked through some of them problems. Uh, we we looked at uh, you know uh, when we looked at Meraki, we looked at you know ease of deployment, um, you know the cloud-based uh, deployment. We looked at uh, we were going to deploy uh, 2,100 access points is what we ended up deploying in uh, just over three months. Uh, the target was three months. We missed it by about you know, I don't know five or six days. Uh, the the went so smooth that our, our CIO actually commented that you know this was was so smooth we should base all our projects on on how on how we're doing this project because we were able to deploy them uh, in ways at, at uh, 100 campuses plus uh, and, and not, not miss a beat at the campuses. So we were able to take the old ones out, put the new ones in. When they plugged them in, they just worked. Um, we had very little problems. Uh, the only thing that we, we really ran into was really in some of the bigger locations where we had, uh, you know, really large uh, Classrooms or you know halls, if you will, uh, and and we needed to figure out how to uh, you know set them up to uh, have the right frequencies, you know manage uh, manage the capacity in in them areas. Uh, so you know that there was a little bit of a learning curve in that. Uh, Just adding a little color to what Jim is saying too. When when we started this project, I suspect for many of you on the call. You know, wireless is becoming like a constitutional right for students, right? And an expectation of customer service that wireless is always going to work and be solid. So, and particularly for DeVry Education Group, where we have, we literally have students and colleagues who are literally and physically on islands, right? Where internet and wireless connectivity is crucial, and the students will stay on campus literally 24 hours a day to take advantage of the air conditioning, electrical, and wireless. Um, so it was real, it's really a critical component of our students' learning and their technology experience. 
Uh, beyond the hardware device they hold in their hands, probably the second most critical thing is do they have access to the wireless. So a significant user experience piece for us, and, and we're really pleased that it went so smoothly. Yeah, thanks, and, Jim and Eric. And I have a question that I think it might be worthwhile just bringing up now and from the audience, and that is which AP model did you select, uh, especially for the higher density areas? Hi, uh, this is uh, David Alicea. We, we went with the MR32s. Okay, great. Yeah. And for those of you who, who aren't familiar with that, that's an 802.11ac uh, model of access point, and it also has an integrated, dedicated radio for RF optimization and security. And we did a lot of them. We've got over 2,100 of them in play right now. So those MR32s are, are all over our offices and campuses across our enterprise. Yeah, and when we purchased them, we actually purchased 2,400 of them. And the, the intent there was that we would, uh, you know, look at coverage and, you know, go ahead and, and redistribute out to areas that had, you know, coverage issues. Um, I can I can say that you know we've sent a few out, but we haven't sent very many out. So you know we we our planning was that we figured that we were going to have more coverage problems than we than we actually do. We, we've only sent out I think probably maybe a dozen or two uh, to 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 cover some of the areas. Um, but we we are going back and using the tools right now to to look at uh, you know what. What areas may need uh, additional uh, support or different, uh, you know, uh, you know, an additional access point or you know where coverage may not be in the right area because we don't have users in that area or things like that. We're looking at uh, what we can do to you know continue to improve and you know as as well as this went, uh, the goal just like Eric said really is to have the student have, you know, an exceptional experience and not to even think, you know, it, to us wireless is really a commodity type item. It shouldn't even be thought about. It should be just like picking up a, a phone and getting a dial tone used to be. Now it's cellular, right? So, you know, how uh, each of our students have multiple devices, uh, you, know, and, you know, three, four devices uh, that, they're, that they're using. Um, so you know, we, we've set it up so that we can handle that load and, and plan to expand that to where, you know, we'll be using, uh, you know, we'll be giving them devices and things like that where, where they'll be using that also. So we only see that going up, not down. And so as you look at the slide, we've deployed over 2,000 of the MR32 Meraki APs. Uh, ultimately, we went with three SSIDs. Uh, we have one for our colleagues. Um, another for our students, and then uh, another for guest wireless. So we sort of standardized generally on three SSIDs, and that's consistent across the campuses. Uh, another nice feature there is myself as a DeVry colleague. Uh, I travel between our locations, and it's completely seamless when I come in with my laptop or my cell phone. It immediately picks up the colleague wireless. I don't have to reauthenticate it as I enter new buildings or campuses. Um, so it's been very nice to have that enterprise level. Um, and then the other element that we've been really excited about and our campus-based IT colleagues have been excited about is the dashboard, which I know David is gonna show later, uh, but it's been really neat to have a greater visibility and transparency into how our wireless is being used or consumed uh, just today, I got an automatic email report to me sharing with me what happened in February. So in February, across our Meraki deployment, uh, 146 terabytes of data through Vera Wireless. We had just under 50,000 distinct clients connect to our wireless network. Um, and sort of Monday through Friday, we're averaging about 18 to 20,000 clients connecting to our wireless network, uh, sort of Monday through Friday. So good, strong, and high volumes, and the, the customer voice has been really happy with how easily it is to get onto it and how reliable and effective it is. And then in many of our locations, um, deployment of the Meraki allowed us to have wireless bandwidth that did a better job on consuming the network pipe we had available. So we saw wireless speeds at some locations increase by 200%. 
some locations even a thousand percent increase with the change in our wireless access points. So a pretty significant success in that regard. And then as Jim talked about, we're in a nice place right now where we've rolled this out quickly over a few months and now we're getting to enjoy just doing the tuning and tweaking and, and sort of improving using the heat map and where do we choose to, dis to deploy additional APs because um, we've got a diversity of environments. Jim alluded to it a little bit. You have office space with colleagues, you have small classrooms in North America, and then you have large, you know, multi-hundred person lecture halls, right, in our Caribbean island campuses. So we've got a diversity of locations. Uh, and it's nice to see the Meraki's performing well in all of those places. Those are some pretty oh, pretty impressive stats that you mentioned there, and I'm sure everyone on the line can appreciate the demanding nature of the uh, users that are on these kinds of wireless networks. So I appreciate you sharing a little bit about that. About that. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit more about what the Meraki solution enables you to do as an IT team. You mentioned just a little bit of that at the end. Yeah, exactly, right? So offering wireless service, strong, reliable wireless service is frankly critical to providing education, which I'm sure many of the folks on this call know it, right? We've talked about that we see a greater and greater number of students coming in with more and more wireless capable devices and the expectation that they're going to be able to use all those devices uh, to conduct their studies uh, and, and frankly, even in some of our Caribbean island campuses to, to live their social lives, too, because they've relocated to an island. Um, the ability for the network team here in Chicago to performance tune the network, to make sure we're providing a reliable network is a big benefit. Um, we have more visibility now about what type of network traffic is being carried and utilizing on the wireless network. So I'm sure no surprise to the folks on this call, we see things like YouTube and Facebook and Netflix and things like that amongst other things. So it gives us the capability to make more informed decisions about how do we do traffic shaping uh, going forward. So really the transparency and insight that the Meraki dashboards bring has really been a nice benefit and pickup to us. And it allows us to work effectively with our academic leaders and colleagues to help them understand how their network bandwidth is being consumed by students and colleagues today. Great, thank you, thank you very much for sharing that. And we're gonna look at the dashboard in just a little bit. Um, before we get to that, let's talk a little bit about your future networking plans. And you mentioned a little bit of, about this when you introduced the DeVry Education Group and talked about its expansion. Um, could you share a little bit about what those plans are moving forward? Certainly, so, so some of the things that we're looking at, uh, you know, we're looking at some of the Bluetooth capabilities and, uh, you know, like on the island sites, you know, it might be nice to be able to give them, you know, a little diagram of, uh, you know, where where the classes are at and be able to tell them where they're at on the campus and how to get to that next class or, or conference or whatever. Um, you know, so we're, we're looking at that a little bit. Uh, the, the deployment of the access points went so smoothly uh, that, you know, we're also looking at uh, the Meraki switches and seeing if there's a, you know, a place for that within the, the DeVry Education Group also. Uh, and, you know, so we've, we've been working with Meraki on, on that a little bit and, and we're still evaluating that. Uh, the other thing that we're going to do is, you know, we're looking as, as an enterprise, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, a big presence in Brazil also. Uh, most of Brazil has relatively new access points that they just purchased, you know, within the past year or two. So as they start to depreciate, we'll be looking to uh, move Rocky APs into that space also, uh, you know, probably in the next two to three years. Uh, and, you know, we'll figure out how we're going to do that. Um, and we're just looking to bring that same level of service, same level of, uh, you know, ease of management and, you know, to be able to do uh, upgrades, you know, basically as as they come out and just roll them through the access points. Uh, we've been through a number of upgrades now uh, of the code and, and it's gone seamlessly uh, just about every time more than any any other uh, product that I've ever, ever seen uh, in my, you know, 30 years of uh, being in IT. So, you know, it's, it's uh, that, that that goes a really long way as far as management of these devices.
thanks for, for sharing that. And since the Bluetooth capabilities are something that's noted for future, I just wanted to touch quickly on um, what that means since we won't cover that in the dashboard demo in a moment. Uh, the MR32, as well as some other uh, newer Meraki access points, have a built-in Bluetooth BLE radio, and that's really for leveraging uh, location awareness into your environment. Uh, so the example uh, just now was helping someone navigate a physical environment, perhaps getting from one location on campus to another, and you can use uh, Bluetooth beacons to help this. Uh, for example, letting a user know where they are and what type of services might be available close to them or uh, a little bit more detail about the location that they are walking by. Uh, that's just one example in, in the campus. Yes. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and switch over to the live demo. Uh, what I'll do is I'll switch over to browser and We'll walk through a few of the things that we've talked about already and actually show you in real time what that looks like. And I will log in and it'll just take me one moment. And the first thing we'll see is an uh, overview of the uh, Chicago campus. Actually before we do that, let's zoom out a little bit and just so you can see a high level overview of the DeVry organization. And there you can clearly see different locations spread across North America, the Caribbean, and icons that indicate groups of locations. Some of these campuses are, are larger or perhaps in a state there's more than one location. So they're summarized by these larger icons. And naturally the green and red colors indicate a little bit about the status of each of those locations uh, and networks. On the right side you can see a list of those and we can of course search for one of those or sort them by usage or sort them by some type of metric of uh, capacity if we want to look at some of the larger or more heavily used deployments. So to start off why don't we look at the Chicago campus uh, as an example and then I'll let the folks from DeVry uh, talk through a little bit about some of the things that we will look at here since uh, it is a pretty interesting deployment that we're going to look at here. I'll just dive into the Chicago campus and then we'll go over to, to look at the overview of this particular network. Hey everybody, this is uh, David Alisea. Uh, I do want to start off by saying that I do find the Cisco Meraki dashboard to be one of the more, well the, the most important tool for Cisco Meraki. Um, in our previous solution, we would need at least two to three different tools just to pull together all this information. Uh, so, of course, that costs time, and, you know, time is money. Uh, but I find that through the dashboard, we're able to see everything. We're able to do everything. We're able to get to all, all the features that we need to get. Um, sometimes I even log in on my phone because there is an app uh, for the dashboard as well, and I can see the same information. So right now we're uh, at our Chicago campus network and we're taking a look at uh, some of the maps. Uh, we're able to upload maps and we're able to place the access points on the maps. This is extremely important. It, uh, gives, us a, it gives us some information as to where we might need additional coverage. There's other tools that we'll go into uh, to help us out with that within the dashboard. But uh, with the maps, we're able to place uh, the access points on the maps, and we're also able to see where the clients are. Uh, there'll be some triangulation information as to where the clients are. Let's say you might be tracking somebody down, or there's a need to pull a device from the field. Uh, you can use the maps uh, for that. So right now, we're able to see the usage over the last week, um, and we're able to see how many clients have connected. Um, in the last week, we've had 852 different clients that have transferred 142 uh, gigabytes of data. So this is pretty important. With this, uh, with our previous solution, just thinking back, uh, some of this I couldn't, I couldn't see. Uh, people in the field weren't able to see, especially people in our campuses. Uh, now people in our campuses, uh, local IT at Chicago, they have access to this, and they're able to troubleshoot their own network. They're able to look at their clients and their access points. Before, they weren't able to do that. Uh, so I do want to take a look at the clients. So under network wide, uh, we're able to see all our clients. 
and just from this page alone, there's just a wealth of information that we weren't able to get to. Um, all those columns, you can move them around. Uh, you can add more columns as well if you want to see additional information. Uh, some of the things that, that I find uh, is important, to, uh, we'll go into the policies in a little bit and what are policies and what, what you can do with these policies. Uh, there's uh, the plus sign that you can add additional, additional columns to. You can even download uh, as a CSV this information if somebody needs a report or if you need to send uh, something out. The search box for the Cisco Meraki dashboard is, I would call, amazing. Uh, right now, if you drop that uh, the little arrow down on the search box, we're able to see the devices that are out there by OS, who's connected to what access point, even what VLAN you're on. Uh, really, when it comes to the network, it, it just matters. Each SSID is just pointed to a different VLAN. And you can move users around based on, on, on those group policies that we'll discuss in a little bit. Uh, but for an example, let's, let's drop that down again. And for OS, we'll put in, uh, I think one of the choices is our favorite uh, Windows XP. I'm sure there's some Windows XP devices out there. So if we wanted to see that, we'll take a look. We'll see that there are three Windows XP devices right now at the Chicago campus in the last day. If we wanted to see a, a bit more of information on that last day, we can drop that down last week or last 30 days, we should see some more additional information as to what's been going on in the last 30 days. So there's still, you know, there's still students or colleagues out there that might be running around with a, a personal Windows XP device. So this is good to know. I'm sure security teams everywhere would like to, to have this information. Uh, the status, uh, that, that column will show you who's online and who's offline. We can see that uh, that MacBook Pro is online. If we want to take a look uh, further into that MacBook, we'll click on that. And we'll get information on this MacBook. We'll see that this is a student that has uh, authenticated via our Active Directory through a splash page. And uh, this is where IT uh, personnel can revoke that splash uh, authorization if needed. Uh, we can see information on the signal, how close they are to an access point. Uh, on the right side, you'll see the map and where this person might be, uh, and they're being triangulated into that area. And I find this extremely important if we need to track down a device or local IT somewhere needs to track down a device. But this is why it's also important uh, prior, you know, prior to putting in these uh, 100 plus networks, we're going around and gathering information like this uh, because we want to leverage all the aspects of, of the dashboard. Uh, so this is definitely something that we find very important. Uh, one of the things that we couldn't do before in our previous solution, which was an on-the-fly packet capture. You'll see under the, uh, the user information on the left side, you'll see event log, packet capture, and you could even add a note about the user. With a packet capture, we can do a packet capture right there and view the output as long as this person is still online. Uh, and this is something that will not interrupt the user's connectivity. In our previous solution, in order for, for the team to do a packet capture, we had to kick everybody off an access point. Um, it, it was just something that was not seamless. Uh, and, and that's what we want is, is seamless. Uh, so for troubleshooting, this is definitely the perfect tool. Uh, we can view the output below in the browser, or we can actually export this to a PCAP as well uh, if we wanted to download information for this client. Uh, let's go back to the uh, client's page. So tr troubleshooting is definitely something that stepped up um, when we went from our previous solution to the Cisco Meraki uh, solution. Um, let's, let's take out that filter of uh, XP there. Apologize, Microsoft is trying to update its software. All right. So let's can you repeat out, that? Uh, let's take out that filter of uh, Windows XP so we can see the rest of our, our clients. Uh, one of the things we, we were not able to see before, unless we were using two other tools to track down information, is just traffic analytics. Right now, for all these clients, for the last 30 days, we have a, a pie on the right side uh, with applications. And if we drop that down, we're able to see the highly used applications that are, are different locations. And these are things we could even pull reports on. Right now, we can see that there's a group usage uh, for video. Video is highly used at the Chicago campus. Uh, 618 gigs of video in the last 30 days. Uh, and we see on the left side, it, it breaks it down by different applications. We have Netflix out there. We have Amazon Instant Video. 
um, everybody's favorite applications are on here. If we wanted to take a look at the, the application that's been used the most, we can click on the usage column. We can just uh, uh, put that in order on the uh, on the usage column to see which application has been used the most for the Chicago campus. So we can see miscellaneous secure web, uh, different websites. Uh, if I wanted to dive in and take a look at what information is out there, we can click on the link of miscellaneous secure web. And for the Chicago campus, it'll bring us uh, a couple things. Uh, we'll see two rules. Who's been accessing those, uh, who's been hitting this rule of HTTPS. So we'll see for the last 30 days information on each device that has been contributing to this rule. The same applies to Netflix. The same applies to Hulu. If you wanted to see information for your clients as to who's going to Hulu, who's going to Netflix, you can do the same thing. Uh, if we scroll down a bit on this page, we should see information on, uh, when the, well, that, that's being blocked for this purpose, but we'll see information as to the destinations. So for Netflix, what destination servers are being used? For this rule here, HTTPS, what websites are being accessed? What's the, the highest used website that's being accessed at the Chicago campus? Um, all this information, I mean, we would have three tools to dig through just, just for this, and, and um, it, it took us about two clicks just to get this information. So the client information, uh, very valuable. We're able to pull reports and we're able to, to make decisions in the future based on that. Um, let's go up to the top again, and uh, we'll go to wireless and access points. Again, we have the MR32s. Um, one of one of the things that I that I that I love about the uh, the dashboard is the tagging. We're able to place tags on networks, and we're able to place tags on access. With these tags, we're able to run reports based on, on what access points have that tag. So for the Chicago campus, you'll see that uh, for the Chicago campus, there's two buildings. One's called Rockwell and one's called Campbell. So uh, each, each building has two floors, and uh, we tag the access points based on uh, which floor uh, they're on and in which building. So Shy Rock is the access point that are on, uh, on the Rockwell building uh, on the first floor. So if we wanted to bring up just uh, the Rockwell access points in that search box, all we have to do is uh, type uh, Rockwell or Rock, uh, it's not case sensitive, and we'll bring up all those access points that are in the Rockwell building. Uh, if we wanted to make changes to them, we could apply additional tags as well. Uh, these columns, again, uh, you can add additional columns. Right now we can see LLDP information for the switches, uh, what access point is plugged in where. We have the usage for that access point. And again, it goes by that, uh, that filter at the top left for the last 30 days. So in the last 30 days, that uh, the Rockwell SEC desk access point has, has a usage of 111 gigabytes. So we can, based on this and the maps, we can see what areas are, are, are very dense, uh, what areas have more clients, what areas we might need to eventually add an access point or expand upon based on this information. And there's another tool that we'll go over, but uh, this right here, we can see that the 103 access point in the last 30 days, 443 gigs. Uh, the connectivity, uh, this is definitely uh, an important part. Uh, as you'll notice, there's a couple of red lines here, a repeater looking for gateway. Uh, just to explain the difference, a gateway really is, is a healthy access point that has a great connection. Uh, a repeater is an access point that is currently tunneled in to a nearby access point uh, just to provide clients with internet. Um, so we see that there's a couple of disconnects uh, at various site, at various uh, access points. We found that at other sites this might be cabling issues. As soon as we corrected those cabling issues, uh, the connectivity issues have gone away. So this gives us information as to what's going on out there in that Rockwell building. We can see that there are some good healthy access points for the last 30 days. And we also have a couple access points that have had some connection issues. And usually those are some are physical issues that we can troubleshoot, look into local IT, can, can swap out some cables, and, and we're good. Um, if we scroll to the right, we're able to see uh, information as well from the switches. Uh, when we first deployed uh, Cisco Meraki at some of the sites, we saw that uh, on gigabit switches, we were pulling 100 meg, and we saw that we had misconfiguration at different places. And through the dashboard, we were able to see these things and correct those issues. 
So uh, you know, single pane, single pane of glass that we're able to do all our troubleshooting from. Uh, let's click on one of the access points. Each of our access points, uh, again, the maps on the right side will give us information as to where this access point is if, if you've uploaded some of the maps. Uh, we added addresses to each of the access points, and that'll move the access point around in, in Google Maps. Uh, we can statically assign addresses through here if needed. Everything's uh, using the DHCP. Uh, we can see information as to whether this access point is up to date with the current firmware. And we can also see some information on VLANs and what's going on out there. Uh, so for this access point, uh, we see that all the VLANs right now are okay. Those are the VLANs that are on the trunk for that specific access point. Uh, this helped us out uh, a lot at other locations as well because we saw that at some sites, uh, we would have a VLAN like 68 there, for example, that would have a problem. And sometimes that's, you know, that's, that's requested on reaching a specific server for some reason from a client. Specific client issues can be seen with that. Uh, but we saw that if it was consistent, we might have this configuration on the switch end. And when we fixed those configuration issues, uh, the problem went away. So those are things that just clicking around through the dashboard, we were able to see. And it helped when we were deploying about 2,000 access points because it, it's hard to keep track of so many switch ports. But with the dashboard, we were able to see that information. You have a couple of live tools here uh, for troubleshooting. Uh, we'll see. We can see the uh, the current clients that are on the access point. Uh, if they have a good signal, uh, if we're able to ping them. Uh, if you have a client that comes over to the help desk, uh, you're able to use these tools to troubleshoot their issues. We're able to do pings. We're able to do uh, take a look at the ARP tables. We can do a trace route from the access point. Um, we also have the blink LEDs. Uh, if you're in a room with nine access points and you don't know which access point is, is which. You could even blink the LEDs to let support know, hey, this is the access point you should be looking for, the one with the, the blinking LEDs. And let's uh, scroll up a bit just to cover uh, under the wireless again. If we hover over wireless, there's a couple other tools that will help us here. We have location heat map and air marshal. Um, just to cover air marshal briefly and location heat map. Uh, these tools, these tools are, are tools that allow us to take a look at what's going on out in the field, um, rem so remotely. So here we have our location map. With the location map, well, again, it's important to upload the maps. We're able to see where our access points are and where connections tend to hang out. So if there's ever a need to move an access point because we have a, a more dense area that needs an additional access point, we're able to use this map. You have a timeline at the top uh, that you can drag all the way to the back, and it'll show you uh, a it'll show you where connections are during that time frame. So we can see that most of the connections are through the center of that building there. Uh, on the left side, there's another map for that section, but we can see uh, where connections congregate. Uh, if there is an access point that's not really utilized, then we might be able to move somewhere else. We can use the, the location map. And uh, if we go back out to wireless and air marshal, we have a dedicated radio on the MR32s that's always uh, taking a look at the environment, taking a look uh, at, at rogue access points that might be connected to your LAN. Uh, it'll also show you neighbors. If there's a need uh, under air marshal to, to contain a rogue, you're able to do that as well. So. Not, not many vendors have this, and, and this is something you might need additional tools to do. But here in the dashboard, we're able to take a look at what's going on on our land. We're able to see there's a couple rogues out there, mostly iPhones, mostly hotspots hot that are out there. But if it was a rogue that's connected to your land, you're able to, to contain that uh, rogue, and you're able to protect your network. And all this happens through the dashboard. These are just tools that our, uh, our field support ha have a has access to and they're able to take advantage of. And there's so many other things you can do. I know we're running a little bit low on time. There's so many other things you can do. Uh, last thing I do want to cover on is uh, under network wide and group policies. Yeah, and this brings up the yeah. network templates, which is has been shown throughout the pages here. And maybe you can just share a little bit about how you use the templates 
and as part of that, those group policies? Yeah, with uh, over 100 locations, um, using the configuration templates was something that we definitely took advantage of. With the configuration templates, you're able to set up your SSIDs, you're able to set up these group policies that you see there, and you're able to apply those uh, configurations to uh, many sites. So right now, under this uh, guest VLAN 15 no Becker uh, template, we have 29 networks that are connected. All those 29 networks are using the same group policies, the same SSIDs, um, and if there's any changes that we need to apply to those 29 networks, we simply come over to the template and we make those configuration changes here. So for group policies, uh, with group policies, there are different things you can do. If you're using splash pages or you will use splash pages in your environment, if there are clients that you need to bypass a splash page because they don't support splash page, uh, you're able to do that through a group policy and you could apply that to different clients. Uh, and those are group policies that you can have out there. Uh, we have another group policy that's taking a look at information from radius. Uh, it's expecting filter, filter IDs from radius. If it sees these IDs, uh, it changes your VLAN on the fly. So group policies are very powerful. You can control uh, bandwidth, uh, you can control QS settings, you can control firewall settings with group policies for different clients that connect. And you can apply those group policies to uh, different clients. Um, and everything is controlled through templates. We try to do everything to, through templates because it just makes things easier to work with. So if for, for customers out there that might have sites that all look the same, use the same SSIDs and the same settings, uh, taking advantage of the configuration templates is, is definitely wise. Super, thanks very much for that overview. Uh, I really appreciate you giving some specific examples of how you're using the dashboard in, in what, what I think are pretty creative ways, such as using the connectivity graph for an access point to troubleshoot the possible physical issues uh, with the wiring or perhaps troubleshooting the switch configuration when you see some problems with a VLAN uh, configuration as related to an SSID. Uh, I think a lot of people on the line can relate to uh, trying to solve some of those problems and can think about how they do it now and hopefully this gives everyone an idea of how you, how you solve some of those problems using the Meraki dashboard. Yeah, and, and to, to add on to that a little bit, I alluded earlier that we had uh, 22, we averaged 2,200 uh, tickets a month. Uh, now that we're more proactive, I would say, um, what we see is we see it, it reduced from 2,200 a month on average uh, to less than 10 uh, wireless tickets a month right now. Uh, and, and that's from January through February. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. For so we do have just a few minutes left, and I want to wrap things up going back to the slides, and then there have been a few questions that came in, and I'll just go ahead and uh, go through this part, and then we'll have a, just a few moments to go over some of the remaining questions. And if you have questions to ask, now's a great time to type them in so we can queue them up and get to them at the end. So. We've been focused a lot about the wireless deployment at the DeVry Education Group. Uh, we talked a little bit about, about some of the models. The MR32 happens to be uh, the one that's deployed in this case. Uh, that's one of a portfolio of both indoor and outdoor wireless access points, uh, including ones with integrated Bluetooth and the dedicated radio for security and RF optimization. We touched on a little bit of that. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, Meraki has a complete portfolio of cloud-managed solutions, including uh, security appliances, uh, Ethernet switches, both uh, copper and fiber for layer 2, layer 3, and aggregation layer switching, and mobile device management in case you are using things like tablets, uh, perhaps for students or perhaps for staff or maybe in a class classroom learning environment. Um, there was a, a question that came in related to one of the uh, security appliances. Uh, I believe the question was, is it required that you use a Meraki security appliance or can I use an existing uh, Cisco security appliance in this kind of deployment? And the answers are, no, it is not required that you use a uh, Meraki MX security appliance. And yes, you can absolutely use an existing uh, firewall solution such as uh, one from Cisco or from other vendors. Any of these uh, that 
products that you see here can be deployed standalone. There are some benefits, especially in visibility and troubleshooting that you get uh, when you do have more uh, of these solutions deployed in your environment, but it's uh, absolutely not necessary. And if you do want to get your hands on a few of the, the things that we talked about today, or maybe some of the ones that we didn't spend too much time on, uh, we do have a very easy and simple evaluation where we will send you products uh, free of charge, no deposits, uh, so you can actually test it out in your lab environment or maybe uh, put it up in a, in a small production environment, for you, see how you can integrate it with your existing systems, and really get a feel for yourself of how uh, management with the Meraki solution really is. Uh, and then if you do, do decide to uh, purchase the solution, it's a very simple and straightforward uh, model, and all of our products include uh, phone support, feature updates, maintenance, and a warranty. Uh, and if you decide it's not the right fit for you, you can simply send it back to us also for free. Uh, if you want to take advantage of that, I definitely encourage you to talk to your Meraki rep or go online to the URL below and fill out a pretty short form. So with that, we have just a couple of minutes left for Q&A, and I do want to just run through a few more of the questions that we had come in, and I want to say thank you for everyone who has uh, typed in those questions. Um, and it, I'll start off with some of the questions for the DeVry, DeVry group. Uh, and one question came in from Scott and asking about online testing. If you do, you have any uh, students using online testing, and if you do, um, do they connect through wireless? And do you have any disconnects when that happens? And what do you do in that case? So we do have students at the, some of our campuses definitely doing online testing, um, and so we're a mixed environment right now. And some of our campuses we have dedicated exam centers with hardwired computers where they're doing their uh, primarily at our medical schools, um, but then we also have situations where we're looking at doing proctored exams at some of our nursing schools and looking at using wire, wireless laptops to accomplish that. So we've got a mixed environment today um, for the real high stakes medical exams for medical doctors. They're doing hardwired controlled labs, but in some of our nursing campuses and other locations, we're definitely looking at uh, using wireless to accomplish proctored exams there. Great, thank you. Um, another question about the cabling, uh, are you using Cat5e or Cat6a, or um, do you have a mix mixture of both? It's really a, it's a mix. Uh, we're using Cat5e and, and 6 um, at most places, but it's, it's really a mix. Uh, there's a question about how Meraki handles nearby APs and how it manages dynamic channel selection. Uh, there were a few other questions pretty similar to that one. So I'll just go ahead and answer that. Uh, the Meraki APs automatically detect nearby Meraki and non-Meraki APs, and so they automatically optimize the channelization and the power levels, uh, so you don't have to. But if you want to uh, tune and tweak that configuration manually, you can go into the dashboard and do that. And we saw a little bit of the tools and visibility that you can use to uh, decide what you want to change that configuration to. And there's a couple of, of other questions. Uh, does, a, does a Meraki solution require a controller? The answer is no. You, everything is managed through the cloud. You don't need uh, a physical or on-premise controller. Okay, and that is uh, almost the end of the questions. There are a few more that we'll just continue to answer b via chat, but I do want to take a moment and say thank you to Eric, David, and Jim from the Bry Education Group. We really appreciate you uh, sharing a little bit more about your experience and also taking us through a tour of your deployment in the Meraki dashboard. Thanks so much uh, to the three of you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. You're thank welcome. You. And thanks to everyone on the line for joining us. Uh, we hope uh, all of you got a little bit better understanding of the Meraki solution as it's used in a real-world uh, case, and we look forward to uh, working with you and speaking with you soon. Thanks again, and have a great day. Bye. Thanks.